Okay, uh, welcome back. We've got our um, kind of built on where we started uh, before. Um, I'm just going to show you I've um, joined up all of the pieces, rename them, put in a single light. I've actually changed the um, material so it looks a bit like this now. Um, I've reverted to an original texture and I haven't put any variations in it yet, but I will do that. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. This is what the camera sees. Uh, I'm going to take my light here and I'll make it a little bit blue. And press F12 to render. And we can see we've got a... we got roughly a... Um, our corridor. Okay, so... What do we want to do now? Well, I just want to add in stuff. Basically, what I want to do, I'm going to add in stuff. So, um, so I've quite simply press, you know, added in a cube, and um, let's give it a very simple kind of gray, dark gray color. Um, And we go to rendered mode. And we just want to start adding in, um, you know, uh, details. So let's add in a circle. We'll make this 12. And uh, edit mode. We're going to try and emulate uh, some of the detail we saw in our circle earlier. And now I'm going to try and turn this. So to do that, I'm going to click here and go S, cursor just selected. I'm going to extrude and hit escape. Oh, I should go back to my screencasting. Here we go. And now I'm going to press OR. But I want to around the cursor. So OR, E, escape, and then OR, and individual origins, E, S, E, Cursor to selected, and um, we do the same kind of technique e escape and then or, and then to make sure it's completely flat, I'm going to go s y is zero, so scale on y to zero, e on y, and again, we need to bring this back to individual origins. So that's enough. Obviously, that's slightly too big. So we'll just scale the whole thing down. And okay, now we're going to face select mode. That face and that one E scale. Oops. Okay. Okay. Now uh, GZ. I'll push 
push this up here. So when I look through the camera, maybe I should have one or two of them in a row. It'll look a little bit like that. Now, I still have to add a bit of uh, color to them. Uh, so I'm going to delete these guys. And what we'll do is we will over here and give it a this material here we'll call this um, dark metal and then we'll give it another material but we'll put it on a separate layer we'll call this light metal and we'll make that grayer so that there so now how do we do that so that's going to edit mode so just like that and that I'm just going to select the major sort of um, tubey bits, if that's the correct terminology. And I'm going to make them the light metal. And then there's a nice feature in Blender where I can invert my selection. So it's going to be light metal. I'm going to go uh, assign, and then I can go select inverse, and then take the other dark metal and go assign. And if we look at our materials, uh, you can see that they're slightly different. Set it to smooth, and. I don't really need to, I could like, add subsurface modifiers and all sorts of, but it's uh, a tube. The only other thing I might want is uh, on this end over here uh, is to maybe sort of um, make it look like there's an extra kind of bit where it goes into the wall and what we can do with this um, piece here we can kind of darken it around you know, where it joins the wall yeah, a bit later so <coughs> there's a piece there so I'm happy with that one we'll call that um, pipe one um, and this can be used in a whole bunch of places so so again and we can do that scale it away from its own, I'm going to go uh, cursor to selected and I'm going to scale it away from its own cursor and that's just basically to keep its height line, although I'll have to change it a tiny bit but just for something slightly different because it's all about a bit of variety so let's look through our camera. That's what our camera sees at the moment. I will save it and press F12 to render. Uh, when you're rendering, a um, few kind of settings to uh, think about. Um, we'll get to resolution in a minute. Uh, it's quite small, this image. Eventually, the image that we make is going to be enormous. So we have to think about. 
light in it, but we also think about other how to speed up the render because we don't want it to take too long. Um, because it could take hours. So f the first thing you need to do is reduce the samples when by default it's 128, which is probably too much for this. It does take too long. And then under here, under light paths, these are up at like 12 and 14. Um, the fewer light paths you have, the quicker it'll render. And this is basically the number of bounces the light makes before it reaches the camera. And it'll give you far more realistic uh, settings. Uh, Turning off caustics will also speed up the render. So this is 11 seconds, 11.64 uh, seconds. So I've reduced these a little bit and I've turned off the caustics. And uh, the image is gonna look pretty much the same. And we're down to 9.7 seconds, primarily because we've turned these off. We can also speed up the render slightly by the size of each square. So if I put in 512 by 512, that normally speeds up the render just marginally. So we might might knock a second off it. Um, so it's just doing it in bigger chunks, and it seems to if you're a GPU rendering anyway, it's quicker. Uh, oh, I think I might have hit animation today. I? I did. Yeah. Anyway, it actually didn't help. It brought me up. Um, so I'll bring this back to 256. It starts off um, at 64. So 256 is definitely faster than 64. So let's just roll back up here for a minute and we're gonna make this at 100%. And let's think back to our, um, so our height, it's HD, uh, and this was 9,600. So now let's see what the camera sees. That is what the camera sees. So we need to zoom out. So I'm just trying to position my camera here. So I'm not going to see anything off screen. I'm kind of flush to the top here and flush to the bottom here. But this is basically one extraordinarily long image. And that's going to, when I render it out, is going to stay on a plane. And that plane will be the background. Now, however many you know, verts it is here in pixels and however long it takes to render it could take two or three hours. Once it's a picture then it's just a picture, a big picture. But it'll be far more manageable than Unity. So um what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna keep on modeling. I just want to show you one or two small techniques um that might improve the you know just mix up your uh your level. First one is this, I'm going to add a, um, a Bezier curve. There's my Bezier curve. And I'm going to move it in here. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into sort of a, a cable. So I'm going to start it over here, rotate it. Oh, I want to rotate it around its own individual axis, or and move this up to here. Now, the proximity of the handles to the point will make the curve sharper or smoother. So I'll move this up here. Take this back a bit. Like if it goes too far up, we'll actually go off uh, off screen. Kind of extrude it out. Rotate it. You go down. And rotate or extrude that again. 
rotate. I'm going to subdivide this as you would in a wood mesh. Um, there it is, my subdivide tool. Just going to bring this out. I might have to do the same with the others. And then I'm going to oops, um, extrude this out here beyond the edge. Now, <coughs> it's just a line, but here I can say it's 3D, it's full, and then I can, uh, oops, sorry, that's offset, that's the wrong one, so I can change its depth, so 0 0.01, and do the same with extrude 0 0.01. And now it's a cable. I can give it a material, so I'll give it dark metal. And if we render that, or do a rendered preview of it, it's, you know, a cable. And the beauty of cables, and maybe we'll make it a light metal. Um, so it's going to select it all, go Shift D to duplicate, G, X, Shift D, G, X, Shift D, G, X, G, X. So a whole bunch of cables coming down. But the nice thing about these is very little effort. Uh, and I can, you know, just move these handles around a little bit. And I can kind of knock the symmetry out of this make it look like um, something a little more kind of organic um, and a little more real so it's not just straight lines all kind of milling around and even down here to the point of you know shifting them a decent distance now we just have to be careful we need to do it in kind of solid mode that we don't end up going through the floor if we're going to start moving stuff around. And what I might do is take that one, that one, subdivide it, and then take the central one, give it a bit of a twist. And keep in mind our character is going to have to walk over it, so we don't want it to be too, uh, protrude too much of the floor, because then maybe the character should sort of uh, trip over it. And we don't want that. So um, adding um, so adding cables like that can add a lot of detail and a lot of again we'll just maybe take that one there and subdivide it. Let's give it a kick. Maybe this one here at the edge. Just to make it look a little bit more real. Now I'll probably make um, like a little bracket to hold them up on the wall. But um, again, if I just go into my rendered preview, they look quite well. Now, the other thing I'm going to add into this, which will make a big difference, is um, we intend to put in a a grate. So I'm just going to add a standard plane, and I'm going to unwrap it. And in my UV image editor, I'm going to open an image, which is my grate here. And I'm going to then make a uh, material called a grate and just show you how this works so we'll go into materials and I'm going to add in my texture which is the grate so there it is and but this has a transparency so um, in 
in shaders we can have a transparent shader we can have a mix shader and I can add that in and it will give me you know it's totally transparent um, but I should be able to feed one into the other and make this see-through Oh, it doesn't seem to be working. Maybe I'm not previewing it correctly. So that's oh, I've no light set there. <laughs> that's not going to work. Anyway, this is going to be my um, platform for the character to walk on. So let's just bring that in here. That should be about fifty percent of the way up. Let me look through our camera, and I'm going to have to cheat a little bit. I want the character, so I'm going to have to basically rotate it ever so slightly and bring that down so that we can see the surface so the character can walk on it. Um, now, let's go into rendered mode and oops. now. So that's going to work a bit better. Uh, this is a tileable texture, so all good. Um, I also want to give it a small amount of, uh, of depth. Normally, that would be a big problem because I get these, you know, straight lines, but it's not a big deal <coughs> because we're looking edge on primarily. Then, what I want to do is I'm going to in edit mode. So look here, I'm gonna add a another cube. Scale it down. Now now I'm just gonna do this by eye, doesn't have to be hundred percent right. So I'm gonna put one there at the start and go shift D G X four of these, so shift D, this is going in there, and then from there I'm going to just basically try and suspend this from the ceiling, and all I really need to do is put in another Bezier curve like this, so I'll take that, actually I'll just make a new one, it's probably easier, so add curve, Bezier curve, now I'm going to straighten it up or 90 and take this so G so again we go over here and we go full and we point zero one then the same for extrude point zero one and we'll give it a material and we've got our um, now the advantage of using these things to tweak that one. The advantage of using them over a traditional sort of cable or just a traditional mesh even is you saw how easy they are to bend. So if I want um, which I will um, to have you know, versions of this walkway that are sort of broken or this is snapped or maybe they're heavily leaning on one side etc as I had in my original plan <clears throat> then 
uh, these are much easier to manipulate than um, than meshes or generally are you can now last thing is lights so let's try and light it a little bit better so I'm gonna go file save I'm gonna take this uh, lamp here delete it now I have to tidy up all of this gonna junk it's not labeled properly but that's okay so again I'm gonna just click here I'm gonna add a uh, cube I'm gonna scale it down and let's have a look at this cube so scale on Y and we'll go to wireframe select the back of it and we're going to scale it up take the whole thing scale it on Z uh, now that is a very simple object but what we're going to do is I'm going to make the back of it um, my light metal and then I'm going to add in a second material and I'm going to call this lights I'm going to delete this diffuse material and I'm going to add in an emitter now a light in blender is just an emitter and give it maybe a strength of 50. Now, what I need to do is I need to go mesh and oh, selection invert. No, you want the whole top of it. Oops. Oh, there we go. And assign. Now, when I go into rendered mode, you'll see that it glows and it illuminates its uh, surroundings. <coughs> so I can go maybe 30 and give it a slight shade of blue and go to object mode and look through the camera zoom out a bit so if I want to light my scene you know, it's very uh, possible and um, let's make it a bit smaller so GUI this attached that to the wall and GX we'll put it there so, make two of them they're kind of sitting there together control J so they're joined together we'll call these uh, lights and then we'll select them all shift D G X uh, we can if we want uh, put them at sort of regular intervals in our in our world now when I go down here to my tubes they obviously that doesn't work so let's just delete that one um, and then shift D G X and we move these down here um, I don't have to be perfect. Anyway, you get the idea. So I'll look to my camera, and I've made an interesting sort of uh, an interesting world. There's still not enough light, but in the same way that I can put them there, I can also put them up above. So I can go uh, Shift D. Now I've duplicated all of them so this will be a lot of light again I'm going across the uh, ceiling so I want to go GY and position them in a similar sort of position in here oh. who knows what that will look like so now we can start to build uh, an interesting world. Uh, so we can use lights as well to uh, illuminate uh, our world. But um, using emitters can be really helpful. So I'm just going to click here and add in a single lamp, point lamp. Move it down. 
I'm just going to place it um, in the middle of this new kind of level. It's got a strength of 100. And it should make a big difference to the illumination, yeah. Yeah, we might want to reduce that to say 50. And you can see that basically this grate here is casting a shadow on the ground beneath it. This is not a bad thing. Uh, these um, um, metal plates have um, a glossy element to them, so that's why they're picking up the blue. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, that makes them a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to file save. Now I'm going to press render. Keep in mind that this is rendering an image that's that big. So it's not going to get to our bit for a while. So I've saved that. I want to see how much RAM this uses. F12. So off it goes. And it's using not too much. 270, so 300 meg of RAM. Um, so we haven't built anything in the rest of the image, and hence it's black. And the bit that we have built, uh, if I zoom in a bit on it, I'll see it render up. Oh, it does not like me zooming while it's rendering. Let's start to get a an idea of how our uh, background is going to look. And I would suggest that while you're doing this, uh, you uh, render out test um, renders frequently in order to see um, like so for example I can't see enough down here of the floor um, for our sprite to walk on I mean I could get away with it but in terms of our original design same with the ceiling so I'm gonna have to change the camera angle slightly so I can see a bit more that does work but it's sort of um, we want it to be we want the ceiling and the floor to be slightly more angled so that um, these pipes for example they go off screen rather than coming basically towards us and stopping. Although we can survive with that. So um, yeah, that's just to give us an idea of where we are at the moment and um, give you some sort of ideas about how you can create a world and um, I'm going to keep working on this and make my level and you'll be hopefully doing something similar.